All right, so two minutes on a tidbit for today. So in the previous chapter, we explained the idea that every single Jew has a natural love for God, and therefore all he has to do is bring that to the surface in order to serve God at all times. We explained that this is actually an inheritance, which we received from our forefathers, that every single Jewish person has it intrinsically within them. From when they're born, they have this natural love for God, which is enveloped in the level of Chachma of the soul, the intelligence, as Chachma is above understanding and it's the highest part of the soul. Now in this chapter, we're going to explain a little bit more where, what exactly this love is, as we already answered where it comes from, but now we have to understand what exactly is the drive for and how does it also have fear included within it, it's seemingly only love. So the altar starts chapter 19, which we do the whole chapter today as it was Shabbos in the year that the Tanya was printed. And the Alter Rebbe says in today's Tanya that to understand this better, we have to understand the idea which it says, Ne'er Hashem Nishmas Adam, which means that the so candle of God is the soul of a person, which means that the Neshama of a Jew, as every single person is called Adam, every single Jew has a soul within them naturally. And that soul is compared to a fire. What's the idea of a fire? A fire is always flickering. It's going up. It wants to go to its source. It wants to disconnect itself from the wick, which is holding it down, and go to its source, which is the element of fire, which is in the heavens, outside of the earth's surface. And therefore, the fire naturally wants to leave the wick at all times. Now, seemingly, it doesn't make sense, as if the fire were to leave the wick, it would be totally nullified, it would be extinguished, and it wouldn't be able to be a real existence over there, and even in the source, it, since there's so much more fire over there than the way it is down here, it would be totally nullified in its source. So why would it want to do that? But even though it doesn't make sense, that's its nature. It still always wants to go to the source. And the same is true by a Jewish person. Now, the Jewish person has a soul, and that soul constantly wants to leave the body. Now, it's not only the level of neshama, but this is all the parts of the soul which are in a body. Nefesh, rach, and neshama. They want to leave the body. They want to disconnect itself from the body which is tying it down to this world, and it wants to be connected to God. It wants to go back to its source in godliness. Even though, know it, even though it knows that in its source it's going to be totally nullified, and it won't be alive anymore in a physical body, that's what it wants naturally. And this word nature, nature is a word which we use, a term which we use for anything which is not logical. Something which happens again and again and we say it's natural is because we don't understand exactly what's going on. And the same is true here. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical that the Neshama should want to leave the body. But nevertheless, that's what it wants. It wants to be connected to only God Himself. Now this is really true about every level within holiness. As the general, the idea of holiness is something which is nullified to God, like we explained earlier. And therefore it's the idea of Chochmah, which is Kayach Ma. Ma is something which means it's, what is it? It's nullified. It's not in existence for itself. As in general, the side of Kedusha is something which is totally not in existence for itself, but rather is totally one with godliness. And this is the opposite of the idea of Klippa, where Klippa is that they always want to be their own existence. And that's a source for where the idea of the nations of the world get their souls from. And also sinner, as we'll explain in a minute, that they come from this level of Klippa, where Klippa, all it wants to do is to be its own existence. It always says, give me more, give me more. Hav, hav, halitani, feed me. I want to just get more and more to be my own existence, that I should be my own thing totally not nullified. And that's the exact opposite of Chachma, like we said before, where Chachma is totally nullifying and going out of yourself to be included in something higher. So to a Jewish person who before he comes to a test where he has to give up his life for God, because then the Chachma will be revealed. But at a time before that, when it's just his regular day-to-day -day life, this level of godliness is concealed within him. And therefore, he also feels like his own existence, that he just wants to do whatever is good for him. And therefore, he has to be nullified to God as well to have this Chachma. But that Chachma is concealed. It's hidden in this level of Klippa, which surrounds this soul. And therefore, it can't be expressed itself. And the, the level of Chachma is stuck in this garment where it's in Golos. It's in exile, where it's not able to express the way it really wants to be. And this is the idea of the Golos HaShchina as the Shekhinah is concealed within the soul, within this level of Klippa, where it's not able to express itself fully. This is why it's called the Ava Musuteris, as it's the love, but it's concealed. It's hidden within this layer of Klippa, which doesn't allow it to express its real desire to be totally one with God, and it's concealed with the desires of this world. Now, when we say that it's, this, in, it's enclosed in the soul, we're talking about only the expression of the Chachma, the way it affects into the rest of the soul. However, the Meich and the real intellect, where, which is where this Chachma really expresses itself, is higher than being able to come into Klippa. And that, for that can't really be concealed. Sealed. However, it's not seen in a revealed sense until it's challenged. And that's what we find by the idea of a person who can go against God for many years. And he could be totally sinning against God and not caring about Him. When it comes to a challenge where he is very belief in God, to deny God's unity, which is something which no Jew can do because of this Chachma in his soul, it totally wakes up. And that's what it says, Vayikatz Kiyoshin Hashem. That before, by Rosh, it was like it was sleeping. But when it comes to be challenged, it says that it's, it woke up. It's like someone was sleeping or woke up for Hashem. And so to this person, when it comes to a challenge, even though he was going against God for so many years, and it says, Rishayim Bershus Libam, that he's naturally, a Rasha is someone who's in, his heart is in control of him and he's not in control of his heart. But still, when his very Judaism is being challenged, God's unity is being challenged, he stands up totally against any challenge and he won't let anything disturb him and he'll be totally nullified to God Almighty to the extent that he'd be willing to give up his life.
And the reason for that is because the Neshama has, has this revelation of godliness, which is a very, very great revelation. And like it says in four different psukim, that when godliness reveals himself, all of the klipa, all of the things which are concealing godliness, are totally melted, totally nullified in, before godliness. You can look at the explanation from the Rebbe's father of why the Alter Rebbe brings four psukim here. Now, since this is such a great revelation, it totally nullifies the klipa in such a strong way that the klipa can't express itself at all, neither in thought, speech, or action, meaning that a person will never do any of those three against God, which means even though he fully can and have his thought and speech, he'll totally think about godliness. He is a Muna and his heart is very strong and he totally believes in God. But just do an action. Just go against God and bow down even though you don't believe in it. A Jew will say no to that and he'll be willing to give up his life. So too, he'll never speak against godliness. Why won't he speak against godliness even if he knows it's not true? Because he'll never even want to do something in his speech which is against God. And so too in everything else. He's totally nullified for God. And therefore he'll never come and he's afraid to go against godliness because he has such a great love and thirst to be totally one with God in a concealed way. And that's the idea of the fear which is which is in the love. As we asked originally, how does this love, natural love, have a fear within it? Because a person loves God so much, he's afraid to go against that love. He's afraid to go against godliness when he has such a great passion towards God in a hidden way. And therefore, this has fear as well in the natural soul. And a person, all he has to do is to be able to arouse it, to be able to reveal it, and he'll see his natural love for God. And will never even be willing to go to the edge to touch a little bit of Tuma of, of Aveda Zara, whether in thought, speech, or even action, because he's totally one with God and doesn't want to be separated. End of today's chapter. See you next time.